Good morning. Um, this is the first Sunday of the new year, and I always like to take the first Sunday. I like to kind of go back over 2015, uh, give you a chance to share with the body what God has done with you over the previous year, and then I, I kind of like to set the tone for what we're looking forward to in 2016. So um, I'm just going to hit some highlights. Um, from last year, January, uh, the McDaniels shared with us their call to Mexico. And Kevin, would you like to just share good news right now? Yes, um, we've been praying about our house selling and we just closed on Wednesday. So praise the Lord. Wait, 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 that's not all, because tell them how Wednesday went. <clears throat> well, we had an appointment for a Wednesday morning and on Tuesday they called us and said, well, it's, there's a hang-up with the wiring and the electricity and we're not going to get to be able to do this. Um, and so they said, well, maybe Wednesday or Thursday, maybe if it'll work, or maybe it'll be off another week or two. And then talked to them Wednesday morning and it uh, doesn't look like it's going to work. And then she called me at like 2 in the afternoon and said, can you be down here at 4.30 to close? So it was kind of an up and down, up and down thing, <laughs> testing our faith. So, yeah. Oh. The house is closed on now, but that, that brings us to a, a, another ministry opportunity. They have until Tuesday to be out. They hand over the keys on Tuesday. They still have, you said about 30% of the stuff is still at your house. Probably about that. So they need help today and tomorrow getting the rest of the stuff out of their house. So if you could volunteer some time to go help them, please talk to Kevin immediately after service so he can kind of get an expectation of what he's looking at. Um, let's see. Um, February, the Jesus Community Church Youth Group officially became the Courageous Youth Group. And I think, <laughs> uh, look, we even have a shirt. Stand up, Nathan, so everybody can see your shirt. <clears throat> the official shirt. No, are you standing? <laughs> okay, because. Yeah, you didn't, your height didn't you? Okay, Kevin is going to demonstrate. He will model for it. Would, would you care to do the boardwalk for us into the walkway? No, <laughs> um, March. We had Isla. Baby Isla was born in March on the 17th, which we find ironic. Um, also in March, we had the youth group go ice fishing. And Dennis is not here to laugh and, and tell stories about the youth group ice fishing. But uh, Thaddeus, we were going over things yesterday, and Thaddeus was like, oh, that was awesome. We had a lot of fun. All I remember him saying when he got home was, boy, was it cold. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, so the further he gets, the more fond he is. Um, let's see. April, we had our Christ in the Passover Seder and the special resurrection service. Um, we are planning on doing that again this year, this year's going to be a little different, though, because for the first time in quite a while, the Resurrection Service, the Resurrection Sunday, is actually quite a way separated from the um, Seder, the Passover. So uh, do you remember how many weeks it is? It's, it's several weeks, isn't it? The difference between the two, Steve? It's three or four weeks? Yeah, I know we were looking at it, and so um, we're going to be doing a little bit of revision there, but we're planning on doing that this year. May saw the wedding of Josh and Mackenzie DeBoer. Um, we also had a, a little bit of a out of the ordinary presentation. We had the uh, Montana suicide prevention presentation here at the church. Um, then we jumped all the way down to August. August we had our Orange Day. Everybody remember Orange Day? Yeah. Now if you weren't here you probably don't remember that. But we chose orange to commemorate those who are suffering for their faith in Christ, those who refuse to deny him. And we chose orange because of the, the parade of all of the ISIS victims. They dressed them up in orange jumpsuits. And just like when Christian was first given to those of the Nazarene sect, it was, it was given as an insult. Because Christian is, is like saying, oh, you're, you're just trying to be little Christ. You're just trying to be like that guy. And the Christians went, yes, perfect. That describes us. 
That's a badge of honor. And we look, the world looks at those orange jumpsuits and, and automatically discredits them as something wrong. And we want to be associated with that because we want our lives to be such a testimony that we would be willing, kneeling in the sand before the ocean, facing our deaths, that we would be calling out Jesus Christ. We would be calling out on our Savior that the last word on our lips in this life would be the first words on our lips in eternity, and that would be to sing his praises. So that was uh, in August. Uh, we also had Dan Burke as our guest speaker. Um, I have been trying to get some other pastors in here, and we've run into some scheduling conflicts, but we will be having more pastors from the area churches come in and share with us what God's doing in their body, what God is showing them. Uh, I, this is a drive that I'm really pushing. I want to push and get at least two of them in this year, possibly three. I want to get our, our picture, our vision, outside of these four walls. There's a bigger church, and God has a, a bigger spirit moving than just what we see in here. Okay? And, and eventually this thing, I'm hoping to get this thing where we're going to look even nationally and internationally. Okay? So, um, let's see. Also in August, we had the activity center was redone. A lot of the rooms were recarpeted and repainted. And from the feedback I got on the big room, it will be repainted again this year. <laughs> I'm looking for volunteers. Um, let's see. October, oh, September. 1,000 Bibles were delivered to Jesus Community Church. And that is an awesome thing because that was a fundraiser, that was a drive that Benjamin felt like God laid on his heart uh, to, to raise the money for a thousand Bibles that could be given out at youth group functions, at outreaches that we do. Um, I don't even know how many to date have we given out approximately, would you say? Over 100. Yeah, because I know the first Friday that you guys did that, there were 56. So there's over 100 Bibles given out just from uh, September to this point, okay? That is a ministry that this church has, and, and I want it to be a growing one. Um, October, Jesus Community Church sent Christy and I to Israel, and I cannot express enough how appreciative we are that you guys did that for us. Uh, Life-changing doesn't even begin to describe it. Uh, the, the, it's like um, everything was crooked, and I had accepted that as normal, and all of a sudden it's been set right. And just the, the picture that I have and the vision that I have of his word is now three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional. So um, we are looking October of 2017, God willing, to take another trip out there. So start putting money back, okay? The total cost is about $5,000 a person. I know that's a lot of money. It is worth every penny, okay? And I know you can go cheaper routes. We chose to go this route because it is Messianic Jews that lead these tours, okay? So they understand the culture, and they understand both the uh, Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. So they are able to reveal things to us that we don't get in our Christian culture because the, the Christian church has tried for so long to eliminate the unique Jewishness out of the Bible, okay? Um, you can get them cheaper. You can get Arab guides that will take you and they'll show you all the sites. They're not going to have the understanding and the insight to the scripture that the Messianic Jews have. So start looking forward to that, October 2017. Also, we uh, had 41 people represented at the Bitterroot Life Chain. And you go, okay, well, what's, what's significant about that? That represents about two-thirds of the people that were in church that Sunday. And we had an additional uh, six to eight people, might have even been a little bit more, I, I don't have the exact number, but we were also ministering down at the Living Center. And so we had an additional six or eight people that would have normally been at Life Chain ministering there. So for a church this size to have that much representation, that is awesome. I, I very much appreciate your guys' willingness to go out and just share what we believe Scripture says, what God's heart is for unborn, cho unborn children. Um, November, oh wait, October. Uh, 
Ariana McDaniel was born. I missed one somewhere back in here. I actually must have missed two, because Jonas was born February. So, and, and I'm missing, who else Piper. am I missing? Piper. Piper. Piper was born September, right? Like September 6th-ish, okay? So four babies born this year. That is one way to grow a church. <laughs> a long-term investment. Um, uh, in November, we also had the International Day of Prayer for the persecuted church. Uh, Jesus Community Church prepared 76 boxes for Operation Christmas Child. That is incredible. I and mean, that's about one box a person in this church. So that is fantastic. Um, and we also did the baby dedication for Ariana, Piper, Isla, and Declan. Uh, huge, huge event in November. The Women's Bible Study concluded their study in Revelation. Okay, now a lot of you don't know what that means. That's almost five years of study in one book. Okay, and you guys looked at me for taking a year to do Colossians. They took five years. So, um, also December, we wrapped up the year with our annual caroling, hayride, soup variety show a thon. And, and those are just some of the highlights. Those are the practical things that happen throughout the year. But that's just the surface, okay? We had so much going on through the course of this year, and I hesitate to say some of the things because I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, but I was looking back through my prayer journal, and I was amazed how many prayers were answered in this body this last year. Uh, things from financial crises to healing to uh, crises of different types um, of people that were on deathbed and did not know the Lord and came to know the Lord only to then graduate immediately to seeing him face to face. So we had incredible things going on underneath the covers. And I, I tell you, we have a faithful dozen that comes out to pray consistently, okay? That's about 12 people consistently every Wednesday. And I, I love those people. Um, you know, we were looking at um, the day before Christmas Eve, we met to pray. The day before New Year's Eve, we met to pray. Now, imagine if you would, if we got twice that number praying. Imagine if we got three times that number praying. People that would come <coughs> together as a group, all agreeing on the same things. Now, not, I, I'm not belittling praying on your own. Please do. As a matter of fact, if you're not praying on your own, you're probably in trouble. But God has a, a different feel and a different response when we pray corporately. You look through the Old and the New Testament, and over and over and over again, it shows, especially in the Old Testament, they would call the entire nation together in assembly to petition God. Okay? So I, I don't know why God has not seen fit to reveal to me why it's different, but it is. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'm going to ask if you would just share with us some of the things that God did for you in 2015. Now, I forewarned you last week, so everybody should be ready with their lists. Ready? Go. <laughs> cricket, cricket. Sure, sure. March. I'll share. Excellent. Um, as you all know, we've been going through quite some years here with my son having cancer, and now Jack and his health. And, um, Kurt was getting to a point where he was going to have surgery and then more tumors come into his body. This last two weeks have been really hard. We, he was in the hospital. Every email I got from his wife was they're giving him more and more pain pills. They're giving him more. They couldn't stop the diarrhea. They couldn't stop the throwing up. He's losing more and more weight. 
um, Lorraine and I was getting ready to go say goodbye, and I go to this dark place where, okay, how do you say goodbye to your child? You know, how do you? And the Lord had pulled me out, and we. And then on Christmas Eve, and I just knew, I just prayed, Lord, I know if he just get out of that hospital bed and go home or walk, he would be okay. On Christmas Eve, I got word that he was standing by his hospital bed arguing with the nurses about his IV lines. <laughs> Something he did when he was little and in the hospital, he argued with the nurses about his IV line, and I just sort of chuckled to myself. He's lost 125 pounds when, or he's down to 125 pounds, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jack. And he, uh, his wife sent a selfie of him and her, and he was in his hospital bed, and it just sort of took my breath away because he's just, but I praise the Lord. And uh, then on Christmas Day, and the first thing he ate was chips and dip. <laughs> I mean, this kid went from being fed by IVs to chips and dip, just okay. And then I says, because I was down here like a little kid, Lord, I want a Christmas miracle. I want that boy out of his, out of the hospital bed. And so I felt like I got a Christmas miracle there. Well, then I got word that his tumors were all gone. They could not find any tumors in. They said, well, it was from chemo. He had had one chemo treatment. To me, it wasn't chemo. And that all they attributed to all of his throwing up and being sick was the melting of the tumors out of his body. And so I thank all you guys for your prayers. It was, needless to say, it was a very rejoicing and happy Christmas for us. Jack is doing good. He's a trooper. He's hanging in there. We're halfway through radiation and chemo now. And um, he's lost weight too, but we're doing we're doing good. And I just want to thank everybody for for all their prayers. And, oh, and another praise Kurt got out on Christmas Day. Her best friend brought over that night, brought over a decorated tree for him so they can have a Christmas. But on Monday, he sent me these, this email, website, whatever, on Facebook. I said, Kurt, we're not on Facebook. He said, just click on it, Mom. I think it will get you there. And on there was pictures of him being baptized. Oh. So I just want to thank everybody. Okay, anyone else? Denise? I just want to thank you all for your prayers throughout the year as well. My sister calls me for that case because there's <coughs> family issues going on, things they need to be fixed, because she feels that somehow we've got the magic touch, and that all, all those prayers that she asked me to place before everyone are answered. And I said, we don't have any better connection than you do. So if we, if we could just keep her in prayer to finally realize that she has the same wonderful connection that, that we all have. But thank you for what you have prayed for, for me specifically. All right. Sally. The beginning of this year, I had a bladder cancer. And um, Sunday I had surgery and uh, came out and had one chemo treatment and then about six weeks of other treatment. And uh, so he said every three months, this is a cancer that might come back. So every three months, I had to go in and ha have a, a scope on my back. And every day, every three months, everybody prayed. <laughs> and every three months, I came out clear. Everything was gone. And then this last one was last week last week and I went <laughs> and it was he said if this is clear then you could go to six months and praise God it was clear so, and we're praying for it once a year yes <laughs> yes <laughs> right that's right 
All right. Anyone else? Thank you. In February, um, one of my little daycare girls was diagnosed with leukemia. And we've been praying, and God has done miraculous things. Miss Shelley came home for Christmas, and she'll be back at my daycare on Monday morning. And that is in remission. In remission. We found a home, which we were had to leave our rental here on Bell Crossing, and and a, a lovely home up there that we're enjoying, and and um, and I got a lovely daughter for my one of my sons last year, and a news that I'm going to be a grandmother. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Her Mother's Day yeah. gift to you. Yeah, it was my Mother's Day gift to you. So yeah. that, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had been before the parole, uh, he, had, he worked on the uh, prison paper and he had went into the uh, warden's office to get it okay to see if everything was okay. And he had never had a personal re uh, with the warden before, you know, and so. The warden looked at his case and he says, my gosh, Ronnie, you've been in here a long time for your crime. It's, it's really hard to believe that you're still here. And so he got on the phone. That's what happened. He got on the phone and in two days he was in Missoula. So, you know, that, you know God works through. You betcha. Yeah. And so it just fits. Yeah. And so for the first time in years, you got to have Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, yeah, he came home for Thanksgiving. And that was another thing. <coughs> he hadn't had yet been even a month out of pre-release where he couldn't uh, even travel out of the county. And uh, her first response was, no, you can't go. <coughs> but then she, she said, no, okay, you can go home for Thanksgiving. So that was his first Thanksgiving in 10 years. Mm -hmm. so, with that, so. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Christy. I've, God's really been growing my faith this year, and a lot of it's been through the stuff that we've seen um, coming through the prayer chain. And I'm the one that types up the text to send out to everyone, and um, sometimes I even feel like I, I don't have, the, like for example, when the thing came through last week for Kevin and Imelda's house, I started to type to ask everyone to pray that the closing would go through that day. But I felt like, well, that's kind of presumptuous and I'm not really sure that's what God wants to do. And I can feel my faith kind of waning a little bit. And then it seems like frequently we send out prayer requests on the prayer chain and within hours the prayers are answered and we have to send back a report through the prayer chain saying, God already answered this and this has been healed, this has been taken care of. And I just think that's really cool how God is showing himself so faithful to this body and when we pray individually and as a group and we bring things before each other and ask each other to pray God's really faithful we were making a joke because we usually get the um, calendars from the funeral home every year we didn't get them this year for some reason they didn't deliver any to the church and we're thinking maybe they're thinking they're not going to get much business from us because God <laughs> <laughs> seems to be healing everyone and, and holding us up so like, he's, he's good and he's faithful and he holds us up in our weak faith too 
I just wanted to thank everybody for praying for me with my, I, I was diagnosed <coughs> with uh, hepatitis C, which I, one of the 40% that doesn't know how they got it. And I could have had it possibly for 40 years uh, without any symptoms at all. But I asked for prayer for um, allowing me to have the insurance company give me the medication they finally invented. And so I had two courses, and then they said, well, maybe you should have a third one. And the insurance company actually went for that. So I'm going in Tuesday for a blood test and one more in three months, but there's been absolutely no sign of any a virus left. So I just am grateful, very grateful. Thank you. Amen, and I <coughs> moved on Gene's behalf because the insurance company you know, like a lot of insurance companies didn't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. It was very expensive. Yes. And it just seemed like overnight they just went poop. And in answer to the prayers of this church, she was able to get the medication she needed and then get the extra doses for the longer time. And now, again. So this is just an incredible thing. So, uh, Kevin, I, I think that was your hand. Yeah. Well, everybody kind of heard what my <clears throat> two big ones were, my baby being born and then uh, just the uh, house sale going through um, finally and that we're just so grateful to the Lord for that and for everybody else for your support and prayers. Um, also just a little update on my niece um, a while back earlier this summer. <clears throat> she had been in an, an accident where an industrial lift had dropped down on her leg and, and pretty much destroyed it. Um, but she's now walking on that leg. Um, they still got a lot, a lot of stuff to do to her. She's had several skin, skin grafts and things that they've done to her tendons and muscles, and I don't know what all they've done to her, but uh, she is actually walking and stuff now, so from being bedridden all summer, so praising the Lord for that. All right, anyone else? Nicole. Yeah, just so um, sorry, it's been a pretty big year for us, and it started with all the prayers in um, answered prayer with my nephew being born. Um, my niece, born two years before him, um, was way premature, and luckily is really healthy. And then um, Evan, she, my um, sister-in-law was able to carry to full term, and he is just thriving, so a huge blessing there. Um, and then in August, um, just thanks so much for the prayer request because Ben is, now has the job of his life and couldn't be happier, which is amazing. And the way that the church body came together when um, when I miss Carrie. So I just really appreciate all your prayers, everybody. It's, it's just been wonderful. So thank you. Okay, I'm gonna give you one more time before I start calling out God's blessings on you, Mary. Um, my sister went to rehab and rededicated her life to Christ, and I'm really grateful for that. And if we can just keep our prayers for her so that she stays strong and keeps going on in the right path. Plus, we told him my car, and we both lived through it. So. <laughs> we both walked away from it. Yeah. yeah. That, no that's sense. huge. Huge. Uh, yeah, we were we were trying to count in the last six weeks. There were well, your wife was in an accident, and you guys were in an accident, and Christy killed an elk with my truck. <laughs> and you killed a deer with your car, or did the deer just walk off? No, he's dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then Mary and Grace also, and and. Yet nobody was hurt. Oh, so, that's just awesome. Yes. I'd like to add Robert to that. His accident was extremely severe, and um, he was able to get right out of it after he struck down what 250 feet. I don't remember. The cab was so smashed, and he's such a large man. I don't mm -hmm. even know how. It was absolutely. Yep. At least have been hurt, not just 
Right. Looking at you, Robin. <laughs> just last week, and they haven't read me in the songs so I just all the days of that, that, That's a second issue, but your first issue, we know what happened with the first issue. <laughs> as far as the, uh, that, and the same doctor, well, I, had, <laughs> I had a spot on my lung, and he was, uh, Dr. Todd was, 95% certain it was cancer. And uh, he was scheduling me for surgery and, and he had to sit me in for a PET scan just to make sure the extent of the surgery. And uh, the PET scan didn't show me that. So and then, and he had me go back in, I think, in three or six months, uh, six months to have a, a CT scan again. And, and there was nothing there. It was totally gone. Dr. Tom is the one that sent me in for the stress test that I had last week on Monday and Tuesday. And then, uh, because of my, oh, I've had five knee surgeries. Because of that, they had to do the, the nuclear test where they injected. So, so that was a two day test. And I did it Monday and Tuesday. And they thought they were going to read the test uh, Wednesday, but as of Thursday afternoon, I guess because of the holidays, they still haven't read it yet. So, as far as what that is going to be, I, I think. Keeping him safe out there. And this year has 
he's done this, what, 17, 18 years. And this year he got promoted to captain and he came home and he took his captain's license. So we now have a captain in our family. And, but I thank you for your prayers for keeping him safe because it's a rough, hard job out there that he's doing. And I just send out a praise for that too. Amen. Anyone else? All right. I have a challenge for you. Okay, each year, I pray, actually for several months coming up to the end of the year, as to what we should look for this, this coming year. And um, I'm going to hit three scriptures real quick. Okay, I know we're, we're running out of time. I just want to hit these real quick. Joshua 24:15. If you want to write these down, you can go back and look at them later. Um, Joshua, this is his, uh, his final speech before the, the nation of Israel. They've come in, they've taken the land, and he's wrapping up. And he says, and if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers served in the land beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay? Then I'm going to jump to the New Testament. And this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. Uh, and he's actually quoting. He says, For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. And now this is what Paul says, Behold, now is the favorable time Behold, now is the day of salvation. Okay? That was 2 Corinthians 6.2. Sorry, 2 Corinthians 6.2. Um, so we see in the Old Testament, a choice. I don't know what you guys are doing, but me and mine, we are serving God. In the New Testament, we see a choice. Today is the day of salvation. And I'll tell you what, the enemy is going to trip you up. He's going to try and attack you intellectually. He's going to try and attack you socially. He's going to try and attack you culturally. One thing is required unto salvation on your part, and that's faith. Okay? Faith. You have got to believe that what God has said he has done is sufficient for your eternity. All right? That's all that's required of you. Okay? So, right now, these two things are leading up to this last passage. And this is Romans chapter 10, uh, 8 through 17. Okay? But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. But if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For well, with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So here's my challenge to you. We're going to work this backwards. Right now, I am sending you. Okay? So you are sent. That means that now you have to preach. Okay? Preaching is just proclaiming. 
You don't have to put together a three-point sermon with uh, allegory or a funny tale to keep their interest. You are just proclaiming. Okay? So now you have to preach. That means somebody has to hear what you're preaching, what you're proclaiming. Don't just proclaim an amen here in church. Proclaim an amen out there in the world where the unbelievers can hear you so that the light that you have can shine into their lives. So this is my challenge to you this year. I want 2016 to be the year that this church explodes in growth. I don't, I'm not talking about people coming into this church. I'm talking about people coming into the kingdom of God. I want this church to be sending lights all out around this community, all up and down the valley, even into that dark place up in Missoula. This church has already sent out missionaries to Belize, to California. We're sending out to Mexico. I want us to send out more. I want us to take the word that we have here and take it out there. Because that is the last thing he gave us to do before he left. Go. Go and preach. Amen? Amen. Father, I bless you today and I thank you. Father, for so many answered prayers for your faithfulness, Father, for the privilege that we have to be in your presence. I ask, Father, that you would bless 2016, that, Father, this would be a year of celebration as life after life is saved, redeemed, purchased. I ask, Father, that you would strengthen us, that you would give us your wisdom, your boldness, that we would boldly proclaim the message that we have received. Father, that we would share this life that you have given us. Help us, Father, to honor you and to be obedient to those things that you have given us. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.